I seriously don't. Hello? I think it's working. Somebody say something if you can hear me. <clears throat> if there's anybody on here, I can't even see who's on here now. I don't think they can hear me. You know how much it's going to cost for us to get this computer fixed? Oh, my God. You can hear. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I saw, like, literally, you guys, I, this has been the worst month <clears throat> ever, okay? It's been nothing but one thing after another. Like, it's just. I, I don't even know how much more I can take. Hopefully it gets better. And this is a good sign because I'm so happy that it works. <laughs> I don't even care if it's only you guys on here. I just, um, well, yeah. Um, our other computer, I have another computer, a brand new computer. And um, it's a Microsoft computer. What is it? It's an Asus. And that one literally messed up. Hi. Yes, I'm so glad to be here. I'm sorry about yesterday, you guys. I literally had no sound. And it looked like I was on mute, but every time I would press the unmute button, it wouldn't work. Nobody could hear me. Um, and I've been sick. I'm finally feeling better. I'm starting to get my taste and my smell back. I couldn't smell anything. I couldn't taste anything. And now it's finally starting to come back. I'm still a little bit congested, but it's just been a bad month, you guys. So I have so much work to do when it comes to YouTube and to catch up and to get my algorithm back to where it used to be. But I'm just so happy to be here. So um, thank you, guys. No worries. <clears throat> um, let me see here. Hold on. Who are you guys talking about? I can't even see. Oh, is it... Kalisa? Kalisa, that's a pretty name. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a bad, it's it, it really has been, you guys. It's been a bad month, plus with my mother and everything and just missing her like crazy. I haven't been, I don't think, I think I was live last week. Last week I was live. Go. No, you're not modding. What I'm talking about is not for kids to talk about. It's not. <clears throat> when I'm talking about things that you can talk about, then maybe I'll mod you. I'm not going to mod you when I'm talking about grown-up things. Josiah, go. <clears throat> okay, so I'm glad to be here. Um, I This live is not going to be that long. Um, I just wanted to come on here and share this with you guys because I don't see many people talking about this. And there was somebody who m emailed me. Um, I don't know if she wants me to say her name. I will say her name if she wants me to. But um, she emailed me and asked me what esoterical is. And I may have spelled it wrong. That's why I changed the title of this live. So esoterical is alignment. Okay. And it's really not in the dictionary. It's almost kind of like a made up word that people use that you know, are into astrology and into, you know, different things like that. And basically it's alignment. It's things that align with each other or things that, sh um, the power of suggestion, things like that. That's kind of what that means. Um, yeah, he wants to mod all the time. I'm going to come on camera in a minute, but he can't mod while I'm talking about this. But this is something that I don't hear anybody talking about. The only person I've heard talk about this is obviously my favorite creator, which is Lovely T.I. And one of my mods will put her channel in the thing in the chat because Lovely T.I. is my favorite creator. We think just alike. Our brains work just alike. And I just haven't heard anybody talking to, about this. When it comes to Gabby Petito, first off, rest in peace to Gabby Petito. Um, it's so tragic what happened to her. And the reason why I feel like it's appropriate to talk about it now is because the case is, is pretty much over. Um, but I didn't want to talk about it 
when it initially happened. This is something that I noticed very early on, even, even earlier than Lovely T.I., but I never said anything because I didn't want to talk about this case when everybody else was. Everybody just literally talked about this case. And, you know, some people did it for the right reasons. Some people did it for the wrong reasons and just for clicks and views. And some people actually did it to bring awareness about this case. I personally just did not want to talk about it, period. Thank you, Lynn. I didn't want to talk about it when everybody else was. And I also felt like it was more disrespectful to talk about it so early on. But um, I'm going to pull something up for you guys that I want you guys to pay attention to. Um, like I said, I'm not going to wait because there's not going to be many people on here because I haven't been live. I'm going to. Um, <clears throat> Hi, everyone. <laughs> Um, but this has literally been such a hard month for me, you guys, things just happen back to back and I haven't been on here. I apologize because <clears throat> I love coming on here. I always feel like I am literally sitting here having a chat with my best friends when I come on here. So it's very hard when I'm not able to get on here, but I have to put my health first and I have to put my family first. Um, <clears throat> but I'm going to, <clears throat> sorry guys, I still have a cough. I'm still very congested, but I do feel a lot better than I did. And my smell and taste is finally coming back. Thank God. But I've lost a lot of weight since I've been sick too. Um, but that's why I, I wasn't talking about it initially, because like I said, there were so many people talking about it to a point where it was like overwhelming. Thank you, Lynn. It was, you know, it was overwhelming when so many other people were talking about it. So I wanted to show you guys something. It's not going to take me long. And did you guys get your Christmas shopping done yet? You guys see all those bags back there? <laughs> oh, I want to show you guys something real quick. So I do have an amazing man. I do, even though he has his faults. So do I. But he is amazing and he does um, spoil me rotten. And I appreciate him for that. And he's spoiled too. But I got my early Christmas present because um, this is something that I've wanted for a while. And this is um, by Lancome. And I want to show this to you guys because I recommend this for anyone who is in their late 20s, 30s, going into 40s. Okay. So this is what it looks like. Oh, thank you, Goose. Do you have their birthday charts? Because those said a lot as well. Otherwise, I will quickly send them if you want. You can send them to me if you want to, Lynn. But that's actually not what it's about. I'm going to pull it up in a minute, but he's amazing. He does treat me. We went to one mall. They didn't have it. And he took me all the way across town to another mall. I recommend these products to anyone who is in their late twenties, thirties, forties, and you don't want to get Botox. <laughs> My fiance won't let me get Botox. I want to get Botox. Okay. I want to try it and see what it's like, but I do take very good care of my skin. It's very important to take care of your skin. Um, don't ever sleep in your makeup. And I am going to do a skincare routine for you guys. It, this is very expensive, but this is a deal. This is a deal. So this was like, a, okay. So this was a $200 value and it was $142. Okay. Yes. Lancome. I love Lancome, but I've been really into skincare lately more than ever. And this is, so this was on sale or, and it was even more off. It was 142. However, it was on sale for 106. <clears throat> so this is what it looks like. And this is the advanced, Genif whatever, Genif, whatever, Genif. This is the, I don't know what that is. I can't say it. It's a um, concentrated activator. It's a youth activating concentrate. 
serum. Okay, so you put this on at night and literally this stuff, you guys, I got a sample of it. Let me tell you, okay. This here is the Renergy Lift Multi-Action Ultra. And this is for lifting, firming, and it's a dark spot correcting cream, which I do get dark spots sometimes. And literally, you guys, this is amazing as well. This jar alone is $100 alone. This, this right here is, I think it's 78. So this, I got a really good deal on it. And then also it has a mask too. It only has one mask in it though. But anyway, I recommend these two things. If you want to screenshot it, you can. For anyone who is technically late 20s, early 30s, 40s, going into 40s. If you want like to see a huge difference in your skin, try these products and you literally will, you won't even... I'm telling you, it is amazing. You won't even think about going to get Botox. <clears throat> and then also, this right here is really good too. This is by Sunday Riley, another really expensive brand, but you get what you pay for, you guys. And this is their um, eye ceramide moisturizing cream. And the reason why this is so good is because it's enriched with vitamin F and it has three types of ceramides in it, which ceramides is very, very important for your skin. And this is by Sunday Riley. This is really good too. So definitely try one of these, not all of them. You don't have to try all of them, but if you do try it, please message me and let me know how you like it or tell me in the chat if you ever get these things because <clears throat> they literally will transform your skin, literally. I'm currently waiting on a dermatologist appointment. My skin has been very crappy lately. I'm telling you, these things are like miracle creams. I'm not even joking. But, okay, so thank you guys so much for being patient with me. Hopefully things will work out and I won't have any more problems. Um, I am feeling better, so hopefully I'll be able to get back on track here because I have so much catching up to do. Probably we'll have to film some videos too instead of going live, but I'm just happy to be here with you guys. So I'm going to share my screen really quickly because I want to show you guys something. So in the Gabby um, Petito case, like I said, I didn't really want to talk about it when everybody else was talking about it. Um, my heart and prayers go out to her family. Um, she seemed like such a beautiful, beautiful soul. And it's such a tragic loss. And it literally lit the whole entire world on fire. And I think when you deal with cases where that person is an influencer and there's so much documentation and so many videos out there um, about that person, you become more intrigued. Or like when, you know, she was her... And I don't even like saying his name, her and Brian were pulled over by the cops, the police and the, the way that they treated her. There's just so much documentation, so many things that you can see re when it comes to her. So I think that's why the world was intrigued. It also gave the world a reality check on how much um, black cases um, of people, um, African-Americans um, like myself, were their cases are very much ignored. Um, the Jelani Day, I covered that case. The cases I like to cover are the cases that no one is talking about. So that's why I never um, really cover that case. But like I said, there was somebody who messaged me and asked me what <clears throat> estatorical means. And it's really just a word that means alignment. There are some things about the Gabby Petito case that are very eerie to me. And there's a point to it that I want to share with you guys. And if you want more elaboration on it, check out Lovely T.I. Um, there's a video that she also did about it. But I just want to point out some things so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. <clears throat>
Thank you, Lynn, <clears throat> for sending that to me. But, okay, so I'm going to share my screen really quick. You know what's crazy? People forget about Janet Jackson. Everybody always talks about Beyonce as, like, the best performer in the world. People don't, people be thinking, they don't think about Janet Jackson. And I was just, I like to get hyped up for my lives. And I'm watching a Janet Jackson um, concert <laughs> on my iPad. And she was just, she still is. She's just such an amazing performer. Like, I think it, a lot of the way that she is, Beyonce is very much like her. Like, she's just amazing. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Hold on, I'm going to turn my camera off real quick. I totally forgot about her. Hold on, you guys. No, oh, you can hear that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't know what they're, they demonetize, are going to demonetize this video because I'm listening to Janet Jackson in the background. <laughs> I love this fucking song. <clears throat> Hold on, you guys. It takes a minute for me to share my screen. Are you still watching? Huh? Are you still watching? Yes. Can I uh, get snacks? No. Get out and you wait until I'm done. You do that on purpose. Don't do, don't ask me things when I'm live because you, you, you know, I'm going to say yes, just to say it out. Can you guys see that? <clears throat> okay. I want to show you guys something. <laughs> Don't come back in here because until I'm done. Oops, okay. Okay, I'm going to read this to you guys really, really quick. And I want to show you one more thing. Okay, so I don't know if you guys um, keep up with Instagram that much or not. I do sometimes. Like, I'm not on Instagram as much as I should be for being technically like an influencer. But I do go on there quite a bit. I want to read this to you guys. Okay, so the fugitive wrote in an Instagram post that he and Gabby read a book called The Lullaby, a horror satire novel by Chuck Polinick, as well as Rant, a novel in the form of an oral biography. Biography And him, Brian and Gabby read this book together, okay? 
And I want to show you guys what this book is about. The Lullaby published in 2002. It tells the story of journalist Carl Streeter, who is writing an article about crib death when he noticed a strange connection between the deaths of the babies and those of his own wife and infants. He then finds out that his wife and child had died after he read them a calling song from the book. Unintentionally, he memorizes the rhymes and becomes a serial killer who kills people over minor, minor annoyances. Rant, which is, was released in 2007, is told in the form of an oral biography and is centered around a high school rebel. Rant, Casey, and another character named Green Taylor Sims, in its synopsis, whatever, the book is described as a mind-bending vision of the future as only Chuck Palahniuk could ever imagine. Laundry wrote on Instagram, the fucking craziest out, <clears throat> out of all of Chuck's books on my shelf. I can't fathom how he must have written this one. I love to preach all of the insane twists and turns, but all I can say is that I'll never forget the name Rant Casey or Green Taylor Sims. Me and my fiance read this one out loud Keep that in mind, you guys. They read this book out loud. And oh boy, oh boy, I can't believe some of the stuff coming out of our mouths. On Petito's 22nd birthday, the couple went hiking and in the photo she posted on her Instagram profile, Laundry can be seen slicing an apple with lullaby on his legs. Petito went missing after going on a cross-country road trip with 23-year-old Laundry, and her body was later discovered in Wyoming after she re after he returned home without her. Laundry's vanish after he was named a person's of interest in the woman's disappearance. The search for him is now about to enter its third week. We know that's not going on anymore. Yesterday, the Laundry family lawyer. So this is just telling all about that. Whatever. We already know the ending of this. This is what the book looks like, um, which is called Lullaby. So basically, the lullaby is about a man um, who goes around killing people but sings them a lullaby first in so many words. Gabby Petito posted on her final photo of the trip on social media the next day. Petito's family believes she was headed to Grand 1010 National Park when they last heard from her. I want to see if there's anything else. Okay. Um, well, another thing that I wanted to show you guys. I don't think there's any more on here. Okay, that's it. <clears throat> but there's another thing I'm going to pull up for you guys too. Okay. So... Hey, Nikki. Welcome. Thank you for being here, sweetie. Okay. So here's the significance of this and um, where I want to talk to you guys for a minute. Those two books were very, very graphic books. And Brian said on Instagram that the two of them read that together. Okay. I... I'm going to assume that the two of them as a couple were into things like that. That is it. That's a very graphic book, obviously, for the two of them to read together. And I think that they were into more things besides that. Because if you guys see on my picture, on one of the pictures where Gabby Petito has two angel wings, um, there are two crescent moons on, e on each side of those angel rings wings. And I don't know if you guys know the significance of crescent moons, but they are very um, symbolic. Okay. And also in my thumbnail picture, you guys could see Gabby holding a pumpkin. Okay. And in her caption, this was a picture that she posted on Instagram. In her caption, it read, Happy Halloween. 
However, when she posted this picture, it was in August. It was in August when she posted it. So why would she say happy Halloween with a pumpkin in her hand, which looked like it, you might have, you, you would think it was Halloween, but it wasn't. There's something that goes in the power of suggestion, you guys. The power of suggestion, speaking, <clears throat> excuse me, speaking words into existence. I believe in those type of things. There is something happening with this world. If you pay attention to the things that are going on around us, if you pay attention to what's going on, even in every state, if you even paid attention to music, okay, if you've noticed in music, a lot of people used to say in mostly rap songs, but in a lot of different songs, last year, demon time. Does anybody remember when Beyonce was like, um, she was, she collabed with Megan the stallion and she was like hips, tick tock. When I dance on that demon time, she might start her only fans. A lot of people were saying demon time in all of their music. A lot of people, right? So what do you think demon time is? Right now, there are so many states, you guys, that are killing each other. It is crazy right now in every state, in every single state. Um, Minnesota, um, Tennessee, where else? Oh my gosh, is it New Orleans? Just everywhere. So many people are being killed right now. Okay. Gun on, you know, gun on gun, crime, violence, whatever. I believe in manifestation, you guys. I believe in those things. I believe if you say things so many times, you will manifest that and it will happen. So just like Beyonce, shit, Beyonce says anything and people go out and do it. Beyonce fucking was in a concert. Okay, she had a concert. This was a while ago. This was months ago, not months ago, years ago. This was years ago. And she was singing a song called called Haunted. It was it's one of it's a good song by her. And on the stage, she accidentally ripped her earring out of her ear. And obviously, Beyonce is resilient. Okay, but she's a different person when she's on stage. She can't even feel any pain. Okay. But anyway, she ripped her accidentally ripped her earring out when she was dancing. She was bleeding everywhere. Don't you know people actually went out and tried to trend ripping your earring out and saying in the hashtag was bleed for Beyonce? I believe in manifestation. I believe it if you're saying demon time, demon time, demon time so many times, it's manifesting now. People are dying all over the world from state to state on violence, just like one of my favorite rappers, his name is, um, oh my God, how could I forget his name? Oh my God. Young Dolph. My head is just crazy right now. Young Dolph. He passed away. I just, he, he got killed in his own city, in his own city where he's from. He did so much for his city. You guys, he did so much and now he's gone demon time. It is manifesting and people are going crazy. People are on their demon time right now. Literally. Did you guys hear about that TikTok challenge where they had a challenge um, on TikTok where all these kids were shooting up the schools or they were daring kids to do it? I can't even remember. I would have to pull it up and tell you exactly what it is. This is crazy. So I believe that words have power. Your words have power. And if they were reading these graphic books together, who knows what that did to Brian's head? Who knows? That could really fuck you up when you're reading books like that. When you're reading these type of graphic books. I want to go into more details of the book really quick. Um, so I'm going to bring it up. Hold on. 
Let me share my screen again real quick. Wait a minute. I want to show you something. Let me make sure that you guys can hear that or see this. Sorry. Okay. So... <clears throat> Now, I want you guys to keep in mind, this is the book that Gabby Petito and Brian Laundrie read out loud together, okay? So, it's newspaper reporter Carl Streeter has been assigned to write articles on a series of cases of sudden infant death syndrome from which his own child had died. Carl discovers that his wife and child had died immediately after he read them a calling song or African chant from a book entitled Poems and Rhythms Around the World. During his investigations into other SIDS cases, he finds that a copy of the book was at the scene of each death in every case. The book was open to a page that contained the calling song. As Carl learns the rhyme has as Carl learns the rhyme has powers to kill anyone it is spoken to because of the stress of Carl's life the deadly rhyme becomes unusually powerful allowing him to kill by only thinking the poem Carl unintentionally memorizes the rhyme and semi-voluntarily becomes a serial killer who makes people die over minor annoyances Carl, Carl turns to Helen Hoover Boyle, a real estate agent, who has also found the rhyme in the same book and knows of its destructive power. While she is unable to help him stop using the rhyme, she is willing to help him stop anyone else from being able to use it again. The two of them decide to go on a road trip across the country to find all remaining copies of the book and destroy the page containing the rhyme. They are joined by Helen's hippie assistant, Mona Mulberry Sabbath, and Mona's boyfriend, uh, a nihilistic, I can't even see, environmentalist and vegan named Oyster. Carl now must not only deal with the dangers of the rhyme, but with the risk of it falling into the hands of Oyster, who may want to use this book for sinister purposes. In addition to tracking down and destroying any copy of the rhyme, the foursome hope to find a grimoire, a hypothesized spell book, which also contains the rhyme. Carl wants to destroy it, believing that the knowledge contained in it is too dangerous, while the others in the group want to learn what others spells it contains. Partly in the hope that there is a spell to resurrect the dead, the group eventually abandons Oyster on the side 
of the highway after he assaults Helen in an attempt to learn the rhyme. Mona eventually realizes that the date book Helen had been carrying throughout the trip is the grimoire they had been looking for, written in invisible ink. Helen had acquired it years earlier in the estate of the publisher of poems and rhymes around the world, whom she had killed with the rhyme as revenge for the deaths of the husband and the child. Wow. <clears throat> Initially, Mona attempts to persuade, persuade Helen and Carl to allow her to translate, um, but they are distrustful of the relationship with Oyster, leaving Mona infuriated. Helen, utilizing the resources she obtained from the publisher's estate, translates the book in addition to the calling song. The grimoire is found to contain other spells, too. Carl and Helen have a romantic moment where they declare their love for each other, but Carl later is left skeptical of the relationship after Mona convinces him that Helen was using a love spell from the grimoire to control him. After confronting Helen about the accusations, Carl decides to kill Nash, a paramedic to whom he inadvertently gave knowledge of the rhyme. Nash uses the rhyme to kill beautiful models in order to have sex with them and their corpse after the confrontation with nash carl surrenders himself to the police and is placed in a maximum security prison during a rectal exam the police sergeant asks him if he is up for a quickie to carl's astonishment helen has used the grimoire to <clears throat> possess the officer's body and helps Carl escape during this time. Oyster steals the grimoire with the exception of the calling song with the help of Mona and uses it to uses it and possesses Helen and commits suicide. With her last amount of energy, Helen possesses the police. She, possess, she possesses the police sergeant and joins Carl to kill Mona and Oyster, who have been using the spells to advance their extremist views. Wow. Okay, so you guys, this is a song that they were, a song, this is a book that Gabby and Brian were reading together out loud. I'm seeing all kinds of things in this book and these words that is crazy. Suicide. It is astonishing to me. I don't even, I, I would say that I want to read the book, but I'm scared to read the book. This book seems very, very, um, no, I don't think I want to read it. Okay. I'm going to show you guys one other thing real quick and then. We'll come to the conclusion. One second. I think this was the article I just read. So, and, and it's very obvious that Brian Laundry was in, in, very interested in homicide. Okay. Oh my goodness. Okay. So here's the other book that they read, you guys.
Okay. Okay, so the next book that um, Brian and Gabby were reading together is called the, is it the Annihilation? Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. This was a novel written in 2014 um, by Jeff Vandermeer. He is a good author. Um, I've read some of his books. Um, it is the first in a series of three books called the Southern Reach Trilogy. The book describes a team of four women, a biologist, an anthropologist, a psychiatrist, and a surveyor who set out into an area known as <clears throat> Area X. The area is, an ab is abandoned and cut off from the rest of civilization. They are in the 12th expedition. The previous expeditions have been taught with disappearances, suicides, aggressive cancers, and mental trauma. The novel won the 2014 Nebula Award for Best Novel, and in 2014, Shirley Jackson Award, Award for Best Novel. Okay, I want to read a little bit of what the book is about. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um, a team of four women, a fifth woman abandoned the team before entering. Cross the border into an, an uninhabited area known as Area X, an unspecified co coastal location that has been closed to the public for three decades. The group consists of a biologist and I, none of the team members are ever identified by name. The story is told through the biologist field journal written after the bulk of the novel's events. They are part of the 12th expedition area and the narrator's husband returned unexpectedly from an expedition showing up in their kitchen without any <clears throat> recollection, recollection of how he got there. The rest of the expedition show up in similarity. A few months later, he died of cancer along with the others in the 11th expedition expedition. After the first night spent in the base camp, the 12th expedition came upon a structure containing a set of spiral stairs descending into the ground inside the staircase, which the biologist repeatedly calls a tower. They find cursive writing that begins with the words, where lies the strangling fruit? The written the writing appears to consist of plant material growing several several inches from the exterior wall. While the biologist is examining the writing, she accidentally inhales spores from one of the script defining growths. After returning from the tower, the biologist discovers that the psychologist who is the appointed leader has programmed the group with certain triggers with via hypnosis by saying the phrase consolidation of authority the psychologist puts everyone except the biologist immediately into a state of hypnosis the biologist believes that the spores she has inhaled have made her immune to the hypnotic suggestions and the psychologist influence the group decides to return to base camp for the night. At dusk, they hear a moaning noise from far away. After spending the night at the base camp, the anthropologist is missing the next morning. The psychologist claims the anthropologist decided to leave and return to the border. The group then make their way back to the tower where the survey and biologist descend back down the stairs while the psychologist stands and watches. Eventually, the surveyor and biologist come upon the body of the anthropologist. It is believed she came into contact with the writer of the text on the wall, which the narrator names 
the crawler. I can't even pronounce that. When the group returns to the top, they find the psychologist is missing. The biologist and the surveyor decide to return to the base camp after fruitless after fruitless search for the psychologist. The night the biologist sees the light in the area of the distant lighthouse, the next day she leaves for the lighthouse while the surveyor stays behind. At the lighthouse, the biologist finds a large pile of journals from the past expeditions, indicating that there have been many more expeditions that they had been told about. Wow. One of the journals is her husband's. She also finds a photograph of what she thinks is a lighthouse keeper from 30 years previously when the Area X had been abandoned near the base of the lighthouse. She finds a psychologist seriously injured. The psychologist becomes frightened by the biologist's approach and screams the word annihilation. Repeatedly later, this is revealed to be a phrase designed to induce suicide in the biologist through hypnotic suggestion. Wow. The psychologist also reveals she had leaped from the top of the lighthouse trying to escape an unknown entity before dying. The psychologist tells the narrator that the border is expanding slowly northward. She also says that the biologist now has started to glow, her body emitting a dim yellow light. Okay. <clears throat> wow. Okay. I just wanted to give you guys kind of an idea of what these two were reading together. Okay. In the GoPro footage of them being pulled over. Um, hold on. I'm going to have to read all of these comments. So I'm just trying to give you guys a little bit of an idea of what the two of them are reading. This stuff is creepy, you guys, especially the first one, especially the first one. There's nothing like in these books. It's about suicide. It's about murder. These are some very graphic books. And Gabby Petito, may God rest her soul, and Brian were reading these books out loud together. Do you know what that can do to people when you're reading those type of books? There is definitely, in my opinion, when you are speaking these words out loud and reading these things together, you are literally only father fucking your head up in my opinion. Now, does that excuse what Brian did? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But I'm saying that I think Brian and maybe even Gabby to a certain extent were a little more dark than the world knew and were into things that people that knew them probably wouldn't have ever even thought that the two of them would be sitting there reading these types of books out loud. These books have a lot of significance, especially when it comes to being out, you know, in the middle of nowhere. Um, what was it with the first book, The Lullaby? Um, a lot of death, murder. Obviously, these books are graphic. And I just could not imagine sitting here with my fiance reading those types of books out loud. I'm telling you guys, words have power. That's all I'm trying to say. When you speak things like this, you can really speak them into existence. Like you can really make these things happen and come true. I believe in all of those things. I believe in the power of suggestion. I believe in predictive program. I believe in the power of symbols um just like also um gabby petito was very much into the monarch butterfly a monarch butterfly is very very symbolic you guys very symbolic and i don't know if you guys know this but that's why you see a lot of celebrities um who 
are very always have the monarch butterfly because there's such it's so symbolic and i'm going to show you guys the meaning of the monarch butterfly hold on one second because i know what it means but i just don't want to tell it to you guys the wrong way so hold on we're researching this together this is just all very interesting to me all of this stuff and i'm very much into it Okay. Okay. <clears throat> So I'm going to show you guys the meaning. I know that the monarch butterfly means transformation. So this is what the monarch butterfly looks like. And you will always see celebrities having this. They always um, pose with the monarch butterfly in pictures. There are a lot of celebrities that have the monarch butterfly tattooed on them. I'm pretty sure Rihanna does. Um, I think Britney Spears has the monarch butterfly tattooed on her too. Um, it's There's just... It's very symbolic. Um, the monarch butterfly meaning and symbolism in the nod to their life cycle from egg to caterpillar to butterfly. Monarchs can represent transformation and rebirth to some people. They might view monarch sightings as a sign of upcoming change or new direction in their life, perhaps due to their long, um, which is up to 33,000 miles, um, migration journey. These butterflies may also be an inspirational sign of strength and endurance. If you see a hummingbird or a cardinal, those sightings have a special meaning as well. Monarchs face a lot of challenges, including ch climate change and um, deforestation. Some sources indicate that the butterflies are a symbol of hope and resilience. And they're also endangered right now, too. So the spiritual meaning of a monarch butterfly, um, like I said, the significance meaning in the Mexican culture during the day of the dead holiday, the Mexican people see the arrival of the monarchs as a spiritual symbol. Many believe the butterflies represent the souls of their ancestors returning to visit and bring comfort to loved ones. Revealers may even dress up as a monarch butterfly in parades and other celebrations. Due to the butterfly's yearly migration between countries, images of the monarchs are also used to show support for immigrants. Use this monarch migration map to track the butterfly's epic voyage. So that is what the monarch butterfly means. And I'm Gabby Petito was very much into monarch butterflies as well. And also the crescent moon. The crescent moon, you guys, I don't know if you know the significance or the symbolism of the crescent moon, but the crescent moon is... If you guys know who Bafa Met is, who is very worshipped by mostly celebrities, he has the crescent moon on him as well. That's very symbolic. And also, I don't know if you guys know this, but the Sandy Sandy Hook, we all know that when that happened, which is devastating, but Gabby was a part of a video a long time ago where there was a tribute they filmed a video like a tribute to sandy hook and gabby was actually in that video all of these things just give me the creeps 
I know that there are a lot of people out there that are just like, uh, Tia, you're crazy, or Tia, you don't know what you're talking about, or I don't believe in this type of stuff. That's your opinion. And I'm entitled to my opinion. And I believe in these kinds of things. I believe that words have power. And I believe that, like I said, being spiritual don't doesn't make you dark. There's nothing wrong with being spiritual. Um, but when you're reading graphic books like that, especially when you're reading those types of things out loud, it can definitely screw your head up. And I believe that the two of them reading these books together that are so graphic, first of all, we definitely know what a dangerous man um, Brian Laundrie is or was. I'm sorry. We all know that. But I do believe that a lot of these books align with what happened to both of them. I really, really do. And I don't want to dare myself to read these books. They do seem like very, very good books, but they're very graphic books. And I just can't see myself reading books like that. I, I don't know if I could read a book like that because I would probably literally scare the shit out of myself and go crazy. Hey, DTOS, how are you? Mm -mm. I just... It's good to see you too. I'm so sorry about yesterday. I seen you guys on here. My speaker wasn't working, but it's so good to see you. Yes, I couldn't imagine <clears throat> reading that kind of graph, those kind of graphic things, like especially the lullaby one. That one gave me the creeps just reading it. So imagine being with your partner and reading that out loud, reading those types of books, and then to ultimately see how it ended for these two so tragic, but yet you kind of have to think, you kind of have to think, wow, literally these two are reading these books together and look at what happens to them. Ultimately, they're reading these books out loud, getting a kick out of how graphic these books are. Can't they, they, he literally said in an Instagram post, I can't believe some of the words that were coming out of me and my fiance's mouth reading this book out loud. That shit can drive you crazy. And if, like even the other book, the other book where, uh, what was it called? Annihilation? Like literally they're stuck in the middle of nowhere, you know, hiking, whatever. And then there's suicide happening and spirits taking bodies. And like, that is very creepy. The energy that you put out, right, DTOS, took the words right out of my mouth. The energy that you put out, I'm telling you guys, I believe in this shit. And I believe that there's no excuse for what happened and for what this man did to that beautiful girl. But it still, in my opinion, means that he was a very much dark person. And unfortunately, um, I don't think that um, Gabby Petito's headspace was where he was. But I do believe that these were two very dark people. In my opinion, I just don't understand why she was celebrating Halloween in August. I, I think there is a reason spiritually, maybe something happens that you celebrate in August. But just being into those type of things and the crescent moon and the monarch butterfly. And then she was also a part of something with the Sandy Hook. She was in a video. Like all of these things coincide with each other. They align. They align to me. And nobody's talking about these kind of things because not a lot of people look at things in that way. A lot of people don't believe that words have power. Just like with me. And my... um my man is starting to get very big on this too. As far as like when we went to the first mall, I'm like, and then they were so busy at the mall. I'm like, they don't have it. And it's this cream that I got that works really good. And I'm like, they don't have it. And it came in a set and we went to a different mall because 
not yesterday, but the day before we went to the mall and it was on sale and I wanted it, but I said, no, I'm not going to get it. And then my fiance is like, come on today. He's like, come on, we're going to go get it. You deserve it. So we go to one mall and it, before we even went in that mall, I'm like, they don't have it. They don't have it. I know they don't have it. And of course he's just looking at me. He's not going to say anything. He's just looking at me, giving me that look that he gives me. We go in there and they don't have it. They just, they didn't have it. And to him, he's looking at it like, I bet you if you would have said they have it, or maybe if you wouldn't have said they don't have it out loud, they would have had it. So then we go all the way to another mall. And before we went in there, because it's just too much of a, it's a, such a good deal to see such you know, Lancome is expensive and their creams are expensive. So when we go to the other mall, before I go in there, I'm like, oh, they got it. They got it. And <laughs> we went in there and they had so many of them. I just believe that words have power. I believe that when last year, when everybody was talking about demon time, demon time, demon time, and all of a sudden, so many freaking bad things are happening now. They manifested it. They manifested that word demon time. And all of this shit keeps happening. People dying of violence. It's just ridiculous. And starting right along with the Gabby Petito case, all the way to um, Young Dolph and all of these people who are getting killed in every state, it's getting really bad. It is really, really bad in Minnesota, you guys. Like, even in my city, it's really bad. When you say things, your words have meaning and whatever kind of energy you put out, it's what you're going to get in return. And whenever you are constantly spitting out negative things, eventually it is going to manifest. And obviously celebrities have a certain amount of power when they're having all these songs and all these kids listening to it. And they're constantly saying, Demon time, demon time, demon time. Now everybody's acting like demon time. They're fucking insane. It's just, and it's just surprise, surprises me. And that's why it's asatorical, but that's de technically not a word, but it's alignment. All of these things align together, you guys. And it really, really makes you think. Now, some people might be like, ah, no, no, no. That you don't know what you're talking about. Words don't have power like that. Yes, they do. And if they're sitting here reading these graphic books out loud, those words, literally those books to me, while I'm reading them, and we didn't even read the book, I'm just reading the plot twist, and it was giving me the creeps, and it was giving me goosebumps. So let alone being with my partner and us reading this book out loud and being almost, in a way, it sounded as though Brian Laundrie was turned on by those words turned on by the graphic things that they were saying out loud. That is not good. So I truly believe that all of these things align together. And that's another thing too. I wanted to show you guys the crescent moon real quick. <clears throat> Wait, I have to look it up first. I always forget. There we go. Let me, okay, let me share my screen real quick. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Did you guys see what it looked like? This is what the crescent moon looks like, obviously. And then 
The warning and waxing crescent moon offers two distinct paths to deepen your moon practice. So a lot of people, you know, the sun and the moon, they are very, very um, powerful. And if you are spiritual, um, there are definitely significant meanings as to why, you know, people look at the moon and look at the sun as being very powerful and people charge their crystals in the sun or in the moon, things like that. I'm not, I'm definitely a lot more into it than I used to be. I've been curious about it, but let's read the meeting. The phrase of the moon offer access, offer an accessible way to connect with nature and her rhythms. Creating a moon practice can help to guide you through the ever-changing cycles that exist within and around you. The full moon and new moon are common starting points, but the crescent moon brings spiritual meaning that amplifies the powers at play. The crescent moon is an iconic sight in the night sky. Um, God, I need to get glasses. Is that the wanting crescent and waxing crescent phrases offer two distinct paths to deepen your moon practice occurring either before or or after the new moon, both aspects of the crescent moon invite a unique spiritual meaning. At a core level, the moon brings an energy for setting intentions, initiating action, and connecting powerfully with your wildest dreams. The crescent moon that occurs before and after the new moon represents what needs to happen on either side of committing to these intentions and your deepest purpose waxing crescent moon spiritual meaning the new moon is often considered the beginning of the lunar cycle if you apply the metaphor of the breath to the cycles of the moon the new moon is that pause you take just before you inhale the new moon is an especially potent time to ground into the truth of what you want to create in your life. If you want to live with a sense of abundance, plant those seeds with the new moon. If you want to feel more ease and freedom in your body, create those images and sensations in your mind and body when the moon is dark. Interesting. The waxing crescent moon offers guidance as a reflection of the sun begins to create a silver of the light on the moon's surface. Gazing at the sight in the night sky reminds you to fan the flames of the intentions and dreams you imagine and brought into your awareness during the new moon. This is an ideal time to connect even more deeply with the internal seeds you planned or that you planted by repeating your affirmations more clearly with complete conviction. Feel and know that they are true. Watch the tiny silver of light grow each evening during the phase, imagining that what you are bringing into the world through your connection with the universe, your spirit, or that part of you that is connected to everything else is growing as well. Breathe life into your dreams as the crescent moon waxes. Huh. Wanting crescent moon spiritual meaning. On the other end of the lunar cycle is a full moon. This could be considered as the pause at the end of the inhale. A time to sit in fullness to to bask in gratitude and to take in at a very deep level the blessings, the expansion, and the grace of all that is. As the moon continues its orbit around the earth and the reflection of the sun begins to slip away by degrees, that reflection begins once again to take a crescent shape. The wanting crescent moon spiritual meaning is one of the release. This is the time to let go of anything that is no longer serving you. The phase of the moon cycle is a reminder that only by letting go of the limiting perspectives, thoughts, and stories will you be able to create the space for what your spirit is here to do. 
You can harness the essence of the crescent moon by noticing and being intentional both when it is waxing and in the release of the wanting phase. Begin to include these aspects in your moon practice and notice the nuisance and how they affect your deepest desire and they come to life. Wow. That's very interesting. So obviously there is some very significance behind the crescent moon. And um, I definitely didn't know that. So that is definitely something that is very interesting and that I, I would be interested in. Um, wow, that's awesome that I read that. So that is basically, you know, those things that um, um, Gabby Petito was very much into, but I also think that, you know, to read those kind of books and who knows what other kind of books that they read, um, those are also books that can make you look at things in a different aspect. And they are very, very dark books. If you challenge yourself to read those kind of books and, um, if you ever do, please let me know and let me know what you think of those books. I personally don't think I could read them. That's how, I don't know. They just made me feel, I don't like it. Very dark. The word, even just reading it, very, very dark books. And I don't know, but yes, thank you for being here. Um, Jennifer Sharp. I appreciate all of you for being here, but I just wanted to share that with you guys because as I've done for the research and then even when I was listening to um, Lovely T.I.'s podcast, it really, really makes sense of how things align together. And I'm a type of person who believes that in life, everything is connected, you guys, everything when it comes to your feelings, your emotions, your animosities, your anger, your love, your resentment, your every emotion, everything in life is connected in some way, shape or form. And I just believe that, you know, I, I really don't believe that Gabby Petito was really into reading those type of books until she probably was with um, Brian Laundry. And there's probably going to be a part two to this because there's a lot of art because um, Brian Laundry was an artist I, or a good artist from what I heard. And he's posted a lot of dark pictures, even on Instagram, a lot of dark pictures. And we will elaborate on that and talk about that more. But yeah, I just believe that a lot of the things that happen was definitely something I, I would think um, could have been prevented in a lot of ways, but I don't, I don't know, because to me, it's inevitable when you're reading those type of books. Now, when it comes to a lot of people who don't believe in words, having power, that's different. If you don't believe in those type of things, then there's no reason to discuss it further. But if you're the type of person who has an open mind and you're willing to look outside of the box on things instead of looking in a box and just taking things for what it is and you like to use your critical thinking and question everything like myself, then you're going to want to take a look at this after watching this video and, and do more research and see some of the things that Brian Laundry was into and even Gabby Petito. And you can find out a lot by going onto their Instagram if it's still up. And this is no disrespect to the family, either one of the families. Um, my heart and prayers go out to Gabby Petito and all of her family. A huge, tremendous loss. She just looked just so beautiful inside and out. Um, and I, it just breaks my heart that she was with someone so evil. Um, but reading these books out loud, out loud can literally reading that kind of graphic stuff out loud and sharing that with your partner can drive you absolutely insane. And I really do think that that's what happened with Brian Laundry, in my opinion. But that's my opinion and everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Um, I really do believe that there's reasons, like I said, you know, everything is connected in life. And 
just because of how violent he was um, even being with her. You know, it was almost like a ticking time bomb in my, in my opinion. And I feel like it's something that he probably yearned to do because he was so interested in death and homicide and those type of things. I think that was something that he really, really wanted to do. And by him being so violent with his partner, um, made the whole situation even worse. So, um, right. They all are sad cases. Um, their terms of service, they never get any easier, but they just get harder and harder. But I just believe that a lot of things that are happening even now, um, things are manifesting and that demon time is manifesting and people are literally killing each other. And I just believe in speaking things into existence. And I believe, um, uh, you know, words have a lot of power, it has a lot of energy, and that demon time energy is out here, man. So be careful, you know, be careful, especially around Christmas time, you guys, especially ladies, be careful. Make sure that if you're shopping by yourself and it's at night, make sure you don't have a purse. Keep shit in your pocket. Just protect yourself. Have some mace. If you have your license and you carry a gun, carry a gun. I'm just saying protect yourself at all costs because it is real out here you guys and if you are in if you are in a dv situation please get out there is help for you okay there is help all over and please get yourself help you can do so much better you deserve so much better you deserve to be with somebody who loves you who cherishes you who never wants to hurt you who would never lay a hands on you please get help if you are in a relationship where you are being mentally or or verbally abused fit mentally verbally verbally and especially physically get out now before it's too late, because let me tell you something, it will get worse. It's never going to get better when you are with a violent person. Never. <clears throat> I'm so glad that her parents decided to turn her death into a positive. <clears throat> And have already started helping other people. I find the missing, et cetera, is only yes, absolutely. It's amazing. Her parents are amazing <clears throat> people. Like they definitely they have even acknowledged the fact of how much you know their daughter's case has blown up and how other cases have been so neglected, and how you know, um, cases with black and brown people completely get ignored. They have even acknowledged that. <clears throat> that case has definitely been, <clears throat> sorry, you guys, that, that case has definitely been um, a much needed reality check for the world. And I hope that when it comes to people and YouTubers um, sharing um, more than just one case and hopping on a bandwagon and just, you know, talking about a case that just everybody's talking about, I hope more YouTubers start talking about cases that nobody knows about just to bring awareness about it. It doesn't matter how many people are watching you, whatever the situation is, um, you are doing a service when you do those type of things. So thank you. Thank you so much for um, putting that in here, Goose. I appreciate you. <sighs> The way her father spoke about other cases was incredible. Huge props to him for doing that. Exactly. Like he definitely didn't have to do that, especially for, you know, the tragedy that him and his family's gone through. But he was very, very much acknowledging the fact that, you know, he's he's grateful that his daughter has gotten so much um you know, coverage and things like that and how, you know, she went viral, but he definitely brought awareness to how cases, you know, of with minorities just pretty much get swept under the rug. Nobody cares about them. And I think he's amazing for that. Amazing. And they just seem like very amazing people and my heart and prayers go out to them 100%. But yes, um, Goose just put in the chat um, everything. There's a number 
or our website hotline. Um, if you are in a situation, if you're watching the replay, if you're ever in a situation where you are in a DV situation, please, please, please get help. Get out now, please. <clears throat> and we'll talk more about that um, <clears throat> within the next couple weeks. But, and the phone number is also in the chat as well. But that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Yes, they are incredibly strong people. Their terms of service, like the way that they have kept their composure throughout this whole thing is absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, but I love you guys. Hopefully things will get better um, from here on out. Like I said, it's the holidays are so hard for me because of my mom, but I've been getting through it. And then I got sick. My boyfriend got sick. My son got sick. Everybody was sick in this house. <clears throat> but I think my son, myself and my boyfriend got it the worst. We, we got it the worst where I think we lost our smell last week. And we just now started to slowly get our smell back. You know how hard that is not to be able to smell anything? Lord. And there's a documentary about Gabby Petito, about the Gabby Petito case on Peacock. You can also find it on there on YouTube. Yes, there is a documentary. I know there's a lot of documentaries about, <clears throat> excuse me, her out there. And there's a lot of people who have covered the case and I just wanted to give you guys a different outlook on it. Um, if you want more elaboration, definitely check out Lovely T.I.'s channel. She's very in-depth with it. She's my favorite creator here on YouTube. Um, and yeah, you know, I just wanted to talk to you guys about that. Open your mind. If you're a replay watcher, open your mind into looking at things outside of the box because not everything is what it seems. And when you're reading graphic books like that, that's definitely something to um, pay attention to. And the fact that, you know, a journalist pretty much, not even pretty much, a journalist um, put out an article about this definitely shows you that there's something to that, you know. And if you're a person that believes that words have power and, you know, manifestation and things like that, look into that if you're not into that, because it's definitely something that, a different way to look at the case, definitely a different way to look at it. Thank you, Lynn, for putting Lovely T.I.'s channel on here. She's amazing. Um, but I will be on here tomorrow, you guys, um, or is it the next day? It's either tomorrow or the next day. I apologize for having to cancel lives. I apologize for everything that's been going on. I'm praying that it gets better from here on out as far as no more technical difficulties. Okay. <laughs> I'm feeling better. Um, I hope you guys are all having an amazing day and I hope you guys had an amazing week and it's getting better day by day. Um, and hopefully, I, I feel like I always get sick around this time, though. I really do. Usually every year I get sick around the same time. And this is just a time where I got sick. <clears throat> we will definitely try to be on time for the next one. Thank you so much. It doesn't matter. As long as you're here, DTOS, I appreciate it. And I am so grateful to have you guys. I'm so grateful to have all of you guys. Thank you for being patient with me. Um, like I said, I'll be live either tomorrow or the next day. Thank you for always supporting me um, because I know that that has to be hard if you're looking forward to one of my lives and then I have to move it or cancel it. It's been a very, very bad month, but it always is during the holidays and then being sick just made it worse. Um, but I'm definitely getting back. I'm feeling better and there's nothing better than sitting here, um, especially when I have a bad day coming on here, being able to spend time with you guys. You guys always brighten my day. So I'm wishing all of you guys happy holidays. I will be on here um, tomorrow. Please be here tomorrow. I'll try to come on here a little bit earlier, but I was on here pretty early today. I was on here like 1030, 1040 or something. And that's usually going to be the time of my lives. Um, the next case that we're probably going to be covering you guys that I want to touch on a little bit is, um, I don't talk about cases much, but I do want to talk about a case that 
it's going to be a good one. I don't think I'm going to tell you guys. I'm, you're just going to see it when it pops up. It's one of, oh my gosh. I'll give you guys a clue. They're from Canada. That's all I'll say. Okay. We just want to be sure you are doing okay and understand how hard the holidays can be. You look amazing as always. Thank you so much, D2S. You guys are so amazing. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep bringing awareness. I'm just trying to stay over here away from that shit because it's toxic and I don't need no more toxic right now. But, of course, I will be back to calling her out very, very soon. Okay. You can't not call her out, right? It's just <laughs> the things that you see and the things that you watch is... Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I love y'all. Thank you to my amazing mods. As always, you guys are amazing. I appreciate you. Thank you to every single one of you who, um, I hear it. It's getting wild. It's getting very wild. So I've been staying away because toxicity, I don't need it right now. I just need to be here, be over here. Let them people be over there. But I will be talking about that because I still watch. I still watch and I I still watch you guys and I still have been paying attention to everything that's going on. And that's what we do here on this channel, y'all. We call people out on their fucking bullshit. And we're going to do it always. And I don't care who likes it and who doesn't. Um, we talk about cases. We call people out on their bullshit. And that's what we're always going to do. Tia is back. Tia is not sick anymore. Tia is about to go hard on this channel. Okay, so get ready. I love y'all and I will see you guys tomorrow or the next day. Don't forget to get this cream for your face if you can. I know it's expensive, but it's so worth it. It's the Lancome Regenerous Lift and the Advanced Concentrate Youth Activating Serum one of them. You don't have to get both of them. Just get one or the other. And I promise y'all, you're going to see a change. Yeah, I have so much work to do. I have to get I have to get back to my regular algorithm. So YouTube algorithm sucks. <laughs> it really, really does. Um, but I love you guys so much. And I will see you guys um, tomorrow. And I hope you guys have an amazing night. Remember how beautiful you are inside and out. And thank you so much for spending your time with me. You could have been anywhere, but you chose to be here with me. And I wholeheartedly, genuinely appreciate it. I love y'all and have an amazing night. Let's do the outro. I always forget. Love you guys. I hope you have a good night. Bye.